Thank you very much, um, dear chairman, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor for me to speak here at your last conference. My um, paper is replacement therapy. It is not, but you can replace not only joints or other things in rumor cases. Um, I want to point out a little bit. I'm an orthopedic surgeon, but beside of this, also rheumatologist. This is um, a cell combination in Germany, and I'm the head of the this department for 15 years now. Uh, our clinic is one of the greatest in Germany, and I want to uh, show where we are in the heart of Germany. The castle is famous for this international exposition for modern art. I understood what I heard today, and also from my deep impression, I would say that the rumor surgery procedure is the last step in the cascade of the treatment. First, the internal medicine has to do with job and other people involved with the patients. All cases I want to present are rumor cases because they're highly specialized for it. In Germany, we did this in the same way as you. Uh, we do the basic therapy in maybe three months. If it doesn't work, we start with biologicals. But as you know, they are effective but very expensive and they have some side effects. They have side effects which affects the work of the surgeon. And I want to point out this several times. Uh, so before we do, uh, think about replacement of joint, we have to do everything to avoid this. This means injection. Uh, I like this sodium borate, uh, this means chloromate or also the radium nuclear therapy. Because um, the histological um, effects of the rumor case, like the psoriasis and others, is the uh, cytovitis of the joints and the tendons. This is the uh, aim to avoid the cytovitis. So, whenever possible, do a prophylactic cytovitis to avoid the tendons or the joints are damaged. For example, here this is a picture um, and if you do the reduction of the cytovitis of the tendons, also look into the joint itself to remove the cytovitis um, on the wrist. When the cytovitis is early, huge like this, um, then it's better to do an open cytovectomy. In other cases, you do it by arthroscopy. After arthroscopic cytovectomy, we go ahead with the radiotherapy, nuclear therapy, or with the chemical are uh, and sino we all face. Maybe, maybe uh, sorry, maybe uh, I can see uh, the head is just be, uh, below the um, uh, the acromion. This is a sign that the rotator cuff is completely damaged. <coughs> um, this lady, I think, decided a bit uh, one month ago. Um, whenever possible, if the um, rotator cuff is uh, good then uh, I do resurfacing. This is the easiest way. The function is quite well. Before I do a, a surgery or replacement of the shoulder, I take always an X-ray and in uh, inverse shoulder systems, I also take a CT scan to see if this bone is strong or not strong enough. You see it maybe already has some cysts inside. And if you want to uh, attach here this limit, then sometimes it will uh, not be a good fixed. But the same patient, the other side, I mean, 10 years ago, with the shoulder is facing, the shoulder um, hemiarthroplasty, so sorry, it's a shoulder hemiarthroplasty. And later on, she had a fall at the typical um, position where the fracture appears at the tip of the stem. So they, um, we have a special plating with a circular wire. And this is a nice lady, uh, shows, uh, shows me how the shoulders are functioning. Um, I know for a long time I did already hips and knees on her. So she allowed me to show her for this uh, conference. Um, I do elbow uh, replacements, but I say to the patient when I do elbow replacement, for the rest of the life, not more than one kilogram, not more than one kilogram, uh, because the bones are thin and um, and weak, and the, the axis here is, is long, so it's like to be that can break out from the ulna, especially. Now I want to start to talk a little bit about biologicals. Um, I have an impression, since we use the biologicals, the complications in, um, 
I mean sepsis of an artificial joint or sepsis of bone or gender or depth of skin is increasing. And uh, this is typically case under biological treatment. Um, the latest study did this osteomyelitis, then the septic fracture. I do this second stage revision, and finally I had to apply this tumor segmental prosthesis. And um, I like it very much. I will show it here. As um, silver coated, you see here the silver coated is a highly antiseptic metal. Um, known for more than 200 years for this function. And um, in, in these particular cases, I am order for it. You can have the silent fractures, um, sometimes without pain. In this particular case, it was an MRS, um, SRI um, um, infection. <coughs> so we did not replace them, we did only oscillosis due to this infected joint. And this healed, fortunately. But unfortunately, uh, he developed uh, osteonecrosis of the fibrohead. This is also common under steroid <coughs> therapy. And so finally, we switch over to total replacement. Another um, typical dysplastic case, dysplastic is um, typical urinary arthritis. In these cases, you have also very, uh, very often a very thin femur, femur canal. So some of the short stem is um, easier to implant than the long stem. And in case of this dysplasia and the original bone is not strong enough to build a new edge, then you can use this tendulum wedge, which works very good because of high muscular integration. And this is an atrophic hip. This means nothing happened, only the cartilage um, has gone. No osteophytes, no subcutaneous cysts, and in this case, I did a hybrid. This is a typical protrusion. Sometimes you can find the head in the small babies. Then you use this head. Um, we have a special machine that we make small uh, slices or small pieces, um, croutons, uh, we say. And we fill up the back completely and then apply this cementless, cementless cup. Protrusion. Very uh, often, I would say, uh, so often, but from time to time, maybe five, three, four times a year, you see this patient with this um, osteonecrosis or arthroscular necrosis of the femoral head due to steroids. And these uh, findings are sometimes painless. painless. The, the patient only um, notices that the, the length is uh, getting shorter and shorter. Very typical. Again, the case with um, a septic hip replacement under biological treatment. And I did, again, this two-stage revision. And I want to show it here. This is a silver-coated segmental replacement. This is an uh, osteomyelitis. Uh, so it's more safe to throw it away completely and replace the proximal part of the femur by this uh, special device, silver-coated. And some, something like five years ago, we started with this BASA. BASA, this is a polyurethane um, um, device for the hip joints. In, it's a little bit soft, but it's, um, in the laboratory, you have, you have any debris. You can maybe 20 uh, millions of surface. You can, um, you can um, examine it. It will really not it's, uh, give any signs of debris. And it's very excellent for soft bone. And it's very thin. This means if you do this advice for the cup, then you can uh, go ahead with a big head. And a big head means the rate of um, dislocation is lower. Also, you can do this in combination with the metal shell, in the event of the situation. This one case, now we have here the big head and only the polyelephant buffer behind the visible X-ray. And this is a... Um, the metal shell and the buffer is a liner inside. This um, poor lady from Greece um, suffering of severe rumors. She had as a young lady this accident and the hair had in the to me. And due to the uh, rumor disease, a stiff knee and this joint. She was unable to sit. 
So um, I had the idea to, um, to use an, a maximum big size of the ephemeral head to avoid this dislocation. And I used this um, buffer, only a buffer, and a shell, and a big head. Um, because with the um, Hindi player to me, uh, you never know how it feels. In normal cases, you have always something which can surprise you under the procedure of the replacement. So you have a modular system available in the theater. So in the case of anything, you can you need long stands, you need um, spacers, or here a rotating hinge, which means um, better stability joint, rotating hinge. In case uh, you saw in the expert here this uh, various deformity, but maybe um, but something you can form inside a big cyst. So you need a bone grafting, you need a bone bank in your hospital to face these problems. Mm -hmm. Again, this patient not biological, but lefilomid. Lefilomid is also something dangerous, I would say, for, for surgeon, for the patient. Um, you have loosening septic, chronic, slowly, slightly uh, septic, um, low-grade infection with this typical radio loosened lines here. I removed it and I built this special spacer. We have this special um, spacer. You can use the spacer with Genamycin with clinamycin and with vancomycin. I wait for, for weeks and when everything is uh, cooled down, then the new replacement, and you see here now, uh, the infection can uh, lead to severe bone loss, severe cavities, and you have different ways to fill it. By cement, you can fill it by uh, bone grafting and also with this tantalum trabecular metal patients. I will show it later. I will show we want to show later. Um, in formal time, as I said, uh, I like to uh, do a replacement with long stem and cemented stem. But uh, in the femur, you have always here a, a bridge, bony bridge, which is not really wider. In case of fracture, you can do a plating. I did it twice with this uh, patient. It will never heal. So then you have to switch over to a total femur replacement. It's nothing really easy, but um, uh, it's the only solution. Of some cases. Another case I did in uh, 2003, this uh, total femur. Then she started again with a new biological treatment after a few months infection of the hip, the femur, and the knee. So um, in this case, you have to remove everything, everything, every, all kind of foreign bodies you have to remove. Cemented spacer loaded with, with um, antibiotics. And then, after a certain time, six weeks, a new total femur replacement. In this, in this case, especially when you have infected knee for a for a certain time, the capsular can be damaged, and this will never heal. So, um, when the infection has gone, then as soon as possible, close these holes with a gastrocnemius flap, as it is always the same patient as I did here. Now she works, uh, fortunately, well. But it's, not excellent, but I prefer to uh, show you this picture of the tobacco metal. You see this fine, porous material. It's soft. You can drill it. You can saw it. Um, and you have different shapes. Also, we have now the stretches for the hip surgery, and we have cones for the knee surgery. And not a little bit expensive. Not too much, but a little bit expensive. So, um, in Germany, we say the hand and the forefoot is a call card for the rheumatoid activity. And this is very typical damaged um, MTP joints. Here, this callus formation, the hematose, and uh, you have a loss of fatty, of the, the blood of fat, and you can find it both um, A very good Operation is this um, resection of the plastic from case and to the value. I prefer the plantar approach. I think it's even better, better than the dorsal approach. But also, um, I use it um, for more than five years now, this couple of spaces. And I think they work very good in the NTP joint of the big toe. The mobility is not excellent, but it's enough for a normal gait. So well, this is replacement therapy with this uh, collected um, scaffold after its function after five years. 
Now um, we finish almost our five years study of these scaffolds and we want to publish it soon. Don't hesitate to do after basis, the reduction of the base of this, this, this joint because this gives a stability for the, for the whole foot, the key joint of the Ruma patients. And I'm always astonished. Um, Sometimes the patients are really um, suffering from their disease, but sometimes, or well, most of them, are they are mentally powerful, and I'm astonished how they find ways to help them sell some individual solutions. I thank you very much for your attention. great respect for my colleague who wanted to know the date. It was in January of 1971. And we've done a lot of them. And a lot of them were forced, actually. And we used the old uh, hinge for the knees. We used the old stand and the shears, which were the first to come up maybe for you days. And as a matter of fact, Dr. Abdi from Egypt in 1972 to 73, we showed him how to do it here in Miami. We've done a lot of them. We've done things which were not supposed to be done, like that joint full of tuberculosis. Every test day, I worked in a, in a tuberculosis hospital, very, very active at that time. And we had joints which were full of mucking that. We took them out and we did a lot of joints. And I also see one of them. And at the same time, also in 1971, in the department, 1970, January, we did the first hand transplant, it's still there. We did the first leg transplant, and she happens to be the mother of my banker, and he's not helping me anymore, so. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that, uh, actually, uh, my heart started to comment when I said the first knee program was in Kuwait. That was true, because I didn't say the placement. I said program, full program. Oh, I there were more aspects, and the modern knee. Actually, the knee you are talking about, there are three knees introduced in the 50s. One by Shields in the UK, one by Valdas, and third one, I don't remember the name. And uh, to know the, actually the important bit, people who know Shields, I have seen him in his late days, two years after he introduced his knee, he was driving Rolls Royce in London, right? And that is how the, the, the market or the medical community were really eager for that. But we cannot really talk about this knee anymore, because the knee, actually, when I started doing knee replacement, I was given advice, which is helping me until now. Never do it before you go to a course of biomechanics. Because now we are talking about the knee, now is not the same knee in the 50, <laughs> fissure anatomy wise. The designs are not the same, the mechanism is not the same, and the combined elements is beyond the ability of any of us to know in one grip. But definitely that need, some people uh, tried it. It was a straightforward technique, but it, going to the time it has been done, it needs a lot of courage and real confidence to do it in these days. And that's what I, I, I appreciate. No, no, sir, it didn't need that. It, need, it did not, it not, need, it not need, it needed that at all. The kind of training we have, yeah. the things we went through, was the best that money can buy. And the other thing, I have four Rolls Royces if you had only one. <laughs> <laughs>